TV episode two. In this episode, we are going to cover special interests and what it means to be a Senko. Recently, I went out to Hampstead Hall to meet the one and only Maddie. Welcome to Cat TV. Today, we're at the amazing Hampstead Hall in Birmingham. Interviewing the awesome Maddie about her special interest. Hi, I'm Caitlin and I'm here with Maddie and today we're going to be talking about special interests. Sometimes people with autism have special interests of things or stuff like that. And Maddie's special interest is... Sylvanian families! Maddie, tell me a bit about your special interest and what does it mean to you? Well, um, my Sylvanian families are really helpful to me because sometimes if I get a bit overwhelmed at home, then I can just go up into my bedroom and I can play um, a story with my Sylvanians and it just sort of helps me a bit because... I feel in control of my own little world, which sometimes is just what I need, particularly in such an unpredictable real world. Well, some, sometimes um, I can't go and play with them because my sister's in my bedroom with friends or family so that means that I don't have a safe place to go and play with them. Um, it also means that um, it, it's one of those things that I don't really want to talk about because I don't want to be laughed at because I play with what some people would consider baby toys. How did your family and friends respond to your special interest? Well, at first, when, when I was, I, I used to go to my cousin's house and she had some Sylvanian families and I used to go upstairs to her house and play with them. So my mum was a bit reluctant to buy me some for myself at first, but eventually she realised it was okay and she got me some. My sister really likes it if I let her play with them, but I don't let her do that often unless I'm going on a residential trip with school or something. So um, I think it sort of helps her feel like I'm in the house as well when she misses me. So um, yeah, my sister sometimes play with them, but I do prefer to play on my own. And she does get on my nerves a bit when she keeps asking to play with them. Not really. I don't know what I'd do. There would probably be some other thing, like like doll's houses or something, but I do really love my Sylvanian families and I wouldn't want to um I wouldn't want to lose them. Maddie, you've been so great today, thank you. But for one last question, could you describe what your perfect world would be? I think my perfect world is where people just accept me for me and understand my little quirks and difficulties and just stop like winding me up because I'm getting stressed out about something in school particularly and um, just for people to accept me for me and understand who I am as a human being and not just some weirdo who does weird things like plays with Sylvanian families. Thank you, you've been awesome. for that Maddie, it's really important to get autistic people's views. My special interest is the internet and YouTube. I spend so much time going through Twitter and Facebook and following all my favourite people and I think special interests are important because it makes us unique and it gives us something to talk about in conversations. Do any of you know what a Senko actually does? or even what it stands for. Hannah from Cat TV went out to Colborne School to find out what it means to be a Senko and what it's all about.
Um, what does being a Senko mean? Being a Senko, which is a special education needs coordinator, means that in school I'm responsible for meeting the needs of any child and every child that's got any form of additional need. I work lots with teachers and the teaching assistants, um, lots of outside agencies and mostly parents. So if a parent's got any concern about a child and feels that they need some support, they can come and chat to me. Uh, we have a local offer which shows um, as a school what we do and if they need anything else then I can also show them um, what the local authority provides as well. Okay, so I have autism and when I was at school it just totally all went wrong. What would you do as a school to try and prevent and if it did all go wrong what would you do? Okay, so we were working with a child with autism and hopefully meeting their needs and we use the AET as well to go through to make sure that class teachers are aware and the classrooms are set up and we've got things in place to meet that child's needs. If things were going wrong and obviously um, the child was unhappy, then we'd have to need to get some more help. We'd have to find out what was going wrong and why. Um, I know that's quite hard to find out, but that's why talking to the child is really important. What we would do, and what I do, is first talk to the child to see what's going wrong, to see what that child needs. And as much as they can articulate, then we work with that. We involve the parents, obviously. It's always paramount that you get them involved at all times. And you're having those regular conversations as well, which is what yeah. I do. Um, even like today, I had the parent ring up because things are going on at home and it's trying to work together um, and put things in place. So you speak to the parents, speak to the child, um, and obviously the cat workers are really important. They give you a different spin on things, they can give you lots of advice, um, and ask you to try different things. Um, we work very closely with our education psychologist, yeah. and again, just to um, give us some extra ideas, really. We carry on working, uh, and again, if things don't improve, then again, it's just you, you have to take a breath, we have to sit back and get as many people involved as possible to try and make it work. But at all times, you need the parent there, and you need the child there, and you need the help from your agencies as well. Yep. <laughs> Thank you for talking to Cat TV, Sue. Um, after doing this 22 years, can you leave us with some advice? I think the only thing I can say is, and what's worked for me, is about thinking about what the child needs. All the children are different and all children learn in different ways and it's about doing the best for them in the way that they learn. Um, not, no two children follow the same path and we may need to do things differently and I think that's what we have to remember all the time. That's brilliant, thank you. I have high function autism which means that it can be hard to see in schools, if you have a broken arm, everybody runs to sign your cast. But if you say you have a mental disability, everybody runs the other way, which is why help in schools is so important. Thank you for watching CAC TV episode two. I've really enjoyed presenting and I can't wait for the next interview. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and share this video. Bye guys.